Hello everyone, Ron Johnson here from LTL Tutoring Central. And if you're looking for tips and strategies to help with your learning, you are in the right place. Multiplying and dividing integers or sign numbers. Now don't panic, don't run away. Algebra is not so tough as long as you learn a few rules. And I'm going to be looking at two major rules for multiplying and dividing integers that will make them quite simple. What do I mean by integers or sign numbers? I mean numbers like 5, 6, 106, and negative 5, 6, and negative 106. So basically positive and negative numbers. So let's have a look, shall we? When multiplying or dividing two integers, rule number one, if the signs are the same, the answer will be positive. In other words, if both of your signs are positive, your answer will be positive. If both of your signs are negative, your answer will also be positive. And here are a few examples. Positive 5 times positive 6 equals positive 30. That's just a straightforward multiplication question, really. Negative 5 times negative 6 also equals positive 30. That's where some people get confused. Negative 20 times negative 12 is positive 240. Uh, positive 15 times positive 18 equals positive 270. Negative 15 divided by negative 3 equals positive 5. So the two signs are negative, but the answer is positive. Positive 200 divided by positive 10 equals positive 20. Again, straightforward division question, really. Normally, we wouldn't even put in the signs, but because I'm discussing integers and we have negative and positive, I put all the signs in. Negative 35 divided by negative 5 equals positive 7. Here's rule number two. If the signs are different, the answer will be negative. For example, positive 5 times negative 6 equals negative 30. Positive 20 times negative 12 equals negative 240. Negative 42 divided by positive 7 equals negative 6. And positive 896 divided by negative 32 equals negative 28. So it doesn't matter what uh, order the signs are in whether the positive comes first or the negative comes first, but your answer will always be negative when multiplying or dividing two integers with different signs. Now, when multiplying or dividing more than two integers, you can simply complete the task by doing two at a time. So you can go left to right, uh, positive 6 times negative 3 times negative 4 divided by positive 8 equals positive 9. And how did we do that? We just went 2 by 2. We did positive 6 times negative 3 gives us negative 18. We still have times negative 4 there. And then we did seven, uh, 72 because negative 18 times negative 4 equals a positive. Remember, two signs are the same. So positive 72 divided by positive 8, and that will give us a positive 9 because the two signs are positive there. So just remember, you still have to follow the rule number two, rule, rule number 1 and rule number 2 that I mentioned before. If the signs are the same, you'll get a positive answer. If the signs are different, you'll get a negative answer. But that's for two integers at a time. So if you have more, you can just do two at a time until you reach the end. When multiplying more than two integers with the same signs, if the signs are positive, the answer is positive. So for example, if you're doing positive 6 times positive 7 times positive 3, your answer will be positive 126. You simply do the multiplication. In all of these, of course, I'm assuming that you uh, know and understand how to do basic multiplication. It's just the signs that you have to watch out for. Positive 18 times positive 32 times positive 4 times positive 78 equals positive 179,712. Again, they're all positives, so uh, this is really just a straightforward multiplication question. If the signs are all negative, the answer sign depends on the number of integers. So if you have an odd number of integers, the answer will be negative. So for example, 
negative 6 times negative 7 times negative 3 equals negative 126. Now, why would this be of any advantage? Well, you, if you know this rule you, and you see a question like this, you don't need to worry or you don't need to spend any time figuring out should my answer be positive or negative. You can simply do 6 times 7 times 3, and when you come up with 126, you know automatically it's a negative 126. The same with a longer question like negative 3 times negative 8 times negative 4 times negative 12 times negative 9. You can just multiply all those numbers up, get your answer 10,368, and you know it's a negative because there's an odd number of integers. There are five in that case. If all the signs are negative and you have an even number of integers, the answer will be positive. So again, you can just multiply the numbers up and what when you get your answer, you know it will be a positive result. So negative 9 times negative 6 times negative 3 times negative 2 will give you 324, and you know it's a positive 324 because there are four integers, and that's an even number. Negative 3 times negative 8 times negative 4 times negative 12 times negative 9 times negative 2, <laughs> it's a long one, equals 20,736, Again, we know it's a positive answer because there are six integers and six is an even number. So in all cases, it will be a positive result. There you have it, two major rules for multiplying and dividing integers that will make them very simple for you to do. One note of caution, don't use this for adding and subtracting integers. It does not work. There's a different set of rules for that. <laughs> so uh, sometimes students confuse the rules and try using these saying, oh, I have two negatives, so it's going to make a positive. No, not necessarily. It, uh, it's quite different when adding and subtracting. But for multiplying and dividing, there you go. You are ready to go with uh, multiplying and dividing integers and not have any problems at all. Until next time, Keep learning and keep having fun.